All right, without further ado, let's get uh, to the news. Recep Tayyip Erdogan and his conservative AK party have suffered a major blow in local elections. Turkey's main opposition party, the secular CHP, claimed victory in key cities, including Istanbul and the capital, Ankara. Erdogan called the setback a loss of altitude and said his party would analyze the message the people had given him. The votes are seen as a bellwether of support for the president and his increasingly authoritarian rule. Opposition supporters in Istanbul are painting the town red, celebrating the main opposition CHP's spectacular victories in local elections across Turkey. The secular party sees it as a sign that it still stands a chance at the national level against the ruling. I mean, this is what happened last time too, and then and then the election came, and we were like, oh yeah, JHP Je and the coalition is going to win. The anti Erdogan coalition is going to win, and then we ended up not winning. So, kind of sucks. Ruling AK party. These election results have been a response to the AKP regime's repression, to what they've done to the economy and the social structure of this country. And that's why I'm very happy now for my country. We were very disillusioned after last year's general elections, but now being here, celebrating with people, being able to cheer. We really miss these kind of feelings. We are very happy. And so is the man of the hour, Istanbul Mayor Ekrem Imamoglu. This is his second victory in Turkey's mega city. Imamoglu has achieved superstar status in Turkish politics. Putting him on the path to national power, many see him as President Erdogan's chief rival. Istanbul'un the nation itself gives the order and the instructions, not just one person. Officials receive instructions from the nation. The period of one-man rule is over. As of today, it is done. The republic and democracy can go full speed ahead from now on. The results mark the worst defeat for Erdogan and his AK party in more than two decades in power. The president had thrown everything at winning Istanbul, Turkey's economic and political powerhouse. He conceded the loss at his party's headquarters in Ankara. We will not disrespect our nation's decision under any circumstances. We will stay away from being stubborn with the nation, acting against the nation's will and questioning the nation's discretion, as we have done since today. March 31st is not the end for us. It is actually a turning point. Istanbul was where Erdogan launched his political career as mayor 30 years ago. Now many see his potential challenger following in his footsteps. Let's bring in Sinem Aydin Duzgit here. She's a professor of international relations at the Sabancı University and also a research and academic affairs coordinator at the Istanbul Policy Center. Thanks for being with us. Now, one of the big winners in this election as we just... RT 31 led in artık damar GG. The biggest reason for AKP's downfall is the economy. The second be biggest reason is for his DQ support is because of the conservative Yeni Refah Party, Erbakan Party, that has taken away the old hyper-religious vote away from AKP. They got like 6% of the vote away from their nationwide and higher in certain cities. I will never understand how horny like a constituency of conservative Turks were for anyone and everyone that is like even remotely religious. It blows my f mind that there are like, there are hella people in Turkey that are like, no, I that shit like i want that i need that in my in my veins i need that in my soul um bro gün yüzü görecek miyiz şu lanet olası ülkede well i ben daha önce söyledim arkadaşlar erdoğan gittiği gün türkiye'deyim okay gittiği gün erdoğan siktir oldu gittiği gün türkiye'ye uçuyorum bu kadar basit geliyorum ayra stream yapıyoruz parti yapıyoruz celebrate ediyoruz uh, adana'ya da gelirim abi her yere gideriz bursa'ya da gideriz adana'ya da gideriz izmir'e de gideriz her yere gideriz which party is more against Western imperialism? Bro, what are you talking about? Turkey is a NATO country. There is no, there is no anti-Western imperialism party that is like viable in any genuine way in this country. That's like not even a thing. Turkey's survival 
Turkey's survival and its like existence basically relies on NATO. Vatan Partisi anti ABD ve Çinci. Eh, tamam işte. Yeah, AKP and CHP are, are uh, NATO adjacent parties, like NATO, pro NATO parties. Guys, we have nukes. We have American nukes in the country. When you have American bases in the country with actual nukes in the country, you are out of your mind if you think that they are going to turn around and be like, yeah, actually, we, we've, we've given that up. AKP and Erdogan are more anti Western imperialist. CHP is more lib and pro West EU. Dude, if you think that Erdogan. And AKP is actually anti-imperialist, and he's not just simply saying that he is, while simultaneously being America's biggest lapdog. I don't know how to communicate this to you. That is a lie. You are being lied to. What do I mean by this? Recep Tayyip Erdogan literally constantly talks about how Israel sucks. First, after October 7, him and the coalition that he had, okay, alongside MHP and even some E party members that are not supposed to be a part of that coalition, immediately hit the anti-Arab note. I remember. Many people have probably forgotten because that shit was like months and months ago, and they very quickly changed their attitude. But in the immediate aftermath of October 7, they hit the anti-Arab button. Okay, they were like, oh yeah, if you want to defend Gaza, why don't you go there? I remember. I didn't forget. I remember that. Some, even in the E-Party, literally said, oh, you want to defend Gaza? How about you go there? You want to be Arab so bad? Go defend Gaza. Okay, you can get the fuck out of my country. Then they saw that there was a groundswell of support that like you had the communists and you had the Islamists all getting together to fucking say free Palestine. So they changed their narrative very quickly. They changed their narrative very quickly. Erdogan himself as well. However, one thing that you have to remember, one thing you have to remember is that Recep Tayyip Erdogan has said a whole lot about Gaza now. And it said, hey, yeah, I was getting a bunch of hate in here from Turks for that. Yeah, I said, uh, you are behaving like America's dogs. They do not see you any differently than the Arabs. They see you also as like Muslim terrorists. I said that. That shit went viral on Turkish Twitter. All these Turkish trolls were like going crazy over it. Talking about like, uh, talking about how like I was a fake Turk. And I was like, you know, uh, I was lying. Guess what? I was vindicated on that too. Hatırlıyor musunuz Türkler? İlk başta ben söylediğim lafları hatırlıyor musunuz? Unuttunuz belki. Kızdınız bana. Dedim ki eğer siz e, Filistin'i savunmak istemiyoruz. Biz aslında Filistin'i sevmiyoruz. Onların hepsi Arap dediğiniz zaman Amerikalıların köpeği oluyorsunuz demiştim. Herkes bana kızmıştı. Hatırlayın bir. 5-6 ay önce nasıl bağırıyordu Türkler internette, ekşi sözlükte falan bağırıyorlardı. Ne oldu? Geldiniz benim tarafıma anladığım kadarıyla. Gördünüz yani. Anyway. Another another moment of my vindication. Ben unutmadım çünkü seninle aynı düşüncelerim olduğu için aynı lafları ben de yedim. Yeah. So, my point is this. My point is this. It does not matter what Erdogan says. Okay? Recep Tayyip Erdogan has complained about Israel a lot. He said, you're a terrorist. Satan Yahu. Netanyahu! You are a terrorist! Right? He said all the shit. Evet, dedim ki isteseler ananızın amına 10 kere mavi marmara yaparlar dedim, evet. I talked about a very specific act that Israel engaged in when they massacred a bunch of uh, Turkish humanitarian aid workers in a fucking humanitarian flotilla that broke through the the the uh, Israeli lines to deliver humanitarian aid to Gaza, you know, decades ago at this point. And I said that Israel could do that 10 times over to your mother's pussy if they wanted to and uh, that you shouldn't fucking defend uh, Israel at all. That's what I said too. I was right. So Recep Tayyip Erdogan says all this stuff about Israel, but it's all actually ultimately completely meaningless. Why is it completely meaningless? Because he's still defending, like he, he there are Turkish pipelines that deliver more than 30% of energy to Israel that uh, are, are Azerbaijan gas and oil. All matter, any matter of oil and gas that goes into Israel, which makes up, 30 to 40% of their entire energy grid literally goes through Turkish pipelines. It goes through Turkey. If Erdogan wanted to, he could shut off Israel's energy right now, tomorrow. Of course, he'll never do that. That would be a genuine act of war, right? That would freak people to out. Erdogan's own son has shipping. Uh, Erdogan's own son has a shipping company. Erdogan's own son is shipping shit into Israel. And a lot of this stuff is known. 
So while he simultaneously talks a big game about like, oh yeah, Israel, Israel, Israel, this, Israel, that, he's still f shipping into Israel. His son's making money. So remember that. So this is a broad-based victory, you're saying. Uh, what were the topics yes. that the opposition did particularly well with in this election? Well, I mean, of course, the number one issue that you had was the economy. The economy has been doing substantially bad. It is always, it's been so bad. It's been so f And it is shocking to me. It is shocking to me that, like, there are still, it's like Javier Malay supporters in Argentina, except like Javier Malay is relatively new. Imagine if like Recep Tayyip Erdogan's currency mismanagement and Recep Tayyip Erdogan's like uh, economic uh, policy failures had been ongoing for uh, the past multiple decades at this point. And it's like, it's so broken. It's so busted. And you still have at least like 51% support or had 51% support for the guy regardless. It, it doesn't make any sense. Here's Metin Jihan's impact on the ballots, Abi. Seçmenlerin paylaştığı bazı oy pusulaları. Gemilerde ihanet, İsrail'e ticaret. Oh, see, there you go. Sen Gazze'yi sattın, biz de seni sattık. Gazze için somut bir adım atılmadığı sürece iktidara muhalefette oy moy yok. Um, these are all people that are uh, posting about like how they're not voting for anybody because like, you know, these are people that are uh, defending Israel. So it's um, İsrail'e tüfek yedek parça. Okay. İsrail'e tüfek yedek parça ve aksamları gönderen şirketi öğrendim. TSK'ye üretim yapan Orsav, Ordu Sonma Sanayi AŞ gönderiyor. Gazze'de katliam sürerken bile belgesi ektedir. AK Parti'nin gözde firması alıcı firma Emtan ise... Aynı zamanda İsrail ordusunun silah üreticisi. Yeah, they're like secretly sending weapons to Israel. I learned about the company that sends rifle spare parts and parts to Israel, Orsav, which is the which is the army defense industry, Ordu, like military defense industry, incorporated, which also produces for the Turkish armed forces and is sending uh, uh, sending parts to Israel, sending rifle parts to Israel. Even as the massacre continues in Gaza, the document is attached. This is uh, uh, AKP's favorite company, the, uh, this guy, Metin Jihan, says. He's an independent journalist. The buyer company, Emtan, is also the weapons manufacturer of the Israeli army. What is this? Okay, but how does it make it clear that he's pro-America? He's just an opportunist. No, doesn't it make him, doesn't make him pro-Western imperialist? What are you talking about? The only reason why Recep Tayyip Erdogan can fucking melt dudes in the northern Syrian corridor is because of America's go-ahead. Recep Tayyip Erdogan is so entirely, so incredibly fucking corrupt that he is very controllable. That's why America loves him. No matter what he says, America always knows that he is their guy. What do I mean by this? Recep Tayyip Erdogan, for example, will say things along the lines of like, oh yeah, we are not going to let in uh, Sweden and uh, we're not going to let in Sweden into NATO. We're not going to let Finland into NATO unless you give me like, eight Kurdish journalists that I can execute or whatever the fuck, right? I'm exaggerating. I'm joking. But like, he'll he'll make up these like demands, right? They'll be like, oh, I'm not going to let, uh, you know, I'm not going to let Sweden into NATO. I'm not going to vote for it. And then the next day, they will open an investigation into his son's like dealings, right? And then the day after, he'll be like, okay, never mind. I was just kidding. We'll vote for Sweden. Uh, we'll vote for Sweden to join NATO. So like, it doesn't really matter. None of his actions are actually real uh, uh, anti-imperialist at all. He is not an ideological anti-imperialist at all. He's just simply using that for votes specifically. And he has been able to uh, tailor himself as like a defender of Turkish interests who is like uh, anti-Western imperialist, uh, which plays well in Turkish politics for the record. Um, but the reality is because he's so corrupt, he is very manageable. He's very easy to manipulate. All you need to do is open up one lawsuit in the fucking New York uh, district. And Erdogan will shut the fuck up and uh, will we'll make a heel turn and do exactly what the Western interests want him to do. This happens all the time. And it does not matter. For the last couple of years, but this year has been particularly difficult for the citizens since they also started feeling the effect of the economic reforms and steps undertaken by the government uh, in the form of rising inflation, unemployment, etc. So they were felt, I would say, more strongly than they were, let's say, nine months before when we had the general election in Turkey. So economy was key.
But apart from that, you have to consider that this is a local election. So candidates were also important. And the opposition, I think, they did a good job of selecting the good candidates in various different districts and also in cities across Turkey. Um, and also, you had the incumbency effect, I think, what we call in the literature, for people like Imam Ali as well, who had been in power, or like Yavash in Ankara, and who had, in fact, performed quite well while they were governing the city. Professor, thank you very much for talking with us today. That was Professor Senem Aydin Duzgit from Istanbul in Turkey. CW's Yulia Han gave us a snapshot of the mood in Istanbul. Opposition supporters here in Istanbul are celebrating victory. Erdogan sent arms to jihadists in Syria and the U.S. was very much okay with it. We learned this through a journalist who's in exile in Germany today. Yeah, mitterleri. Cumhuriyet Gazetesi Genel Yayın Yönetmeni Can Dündar ve Ankara temsilcisi Erdem Gül'ün dün tutuklamasına gerekçe gösteren haber gazetede 29 Mayıs 2015 günü. İşte Erdoğan'ın yok dediği silahlar başlığı yayınlandı. Yeah, this dude Can Dündar literally fucking uncovered. Uh, MIT is the, the CIA, Milli İstihbarat Teşkilatı is the Turkish CIA. So we uncovered that the Turkish CIA was basically giving fucking uh, weapons to the jihadists under the watchful eye of the United States of America. And then what did Turkey do? Well, they were like, yeah, you're going to jail. <laughs> this was in 2015, by the way. I mean, this is like, this has been ongoing for uh, a very long time. So anyone that says like Recep Tayyip Erdogan is anti-imperialist is uh, wrong. Just something to consider. Uh, funny, American MIT is CIA too. Yeah, but that's Milli İstihbarat Teşkilatı is like literally the official organ of the government and not like the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which is a, a CIA scouting ground. To be fair, I have no idea how we won so many cities. Most of the uh, anti-AKP people, uh, anti people in Turkey I know claim they didn't even bother going to vote. One thing I know is that AKP supporters have a tendency to punish in local elections, but they never do in the actual presidency elections. Same happened in 2019, as you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, MIT uh, translates the National Information Agency, NIA, I guess. I was in Turkey two years ago. You can literally feel and see the poverty spreading. I was shocking. Uh, it was shocking that Erdogan won the presidential elections last time. Yeah, because people are cucked, my man. That's it. And I think that there's, a, there's another reason for it. And the other reason for it is like deep-seated corruption. Uh, party loyalty is how people make a living, basically. As far as I understand, there's like a lot of good welfare policies, but... A lot of good welfare policies are seen as like the only mechanism to get those good welfare policies or to get those jobs, for example, is by being connected to the party. This is why you have a stranglehold in the in the general election, because a lot of these people are like, well, this is how I pay for uh, this is how I pay for my meals. This is how I pay for my uh, my my, uh, you know, the health care of my parents, because there's a lot of. Uh, like Turkey has, as far as I understand, a fairly robust social welfare structure. And that social welfare structure directly ties back to like, uh, you know, AKP support. Now, of course, this is not an opposition to like welfare at all. I would go so far as to say that Erdogan has done a good job with that. As a matter of fact, I have no issue with welfare. I'm pro welfare myself. I think robust welfare policies are a good thing overall. It's just that Erdogan supporters need to understand that, like, it's not going to go away as long as you don't vote for Erdogan. CHP, JHP, is the Social Democrat Party. Erdogan's party, and many people don't probably remember this any longer, because this was way back in the day when they first came to power, but Erdogan was a neoliberal party. A big part of Erdogan's strategy originally was to privatize previously nationalized sectors, sell it off to foreign investment. He did that over and over and over again. He did that for years. The first decade of Erdogan's power was literally neoliberal austerity and the privatization of key sectors in the country. And I think that a lot of people forget that. Now he's become more of this like welfare guy, but he was originally, yeah, he was the original EU reformer guy. And he implemented all of the economic policies that the European leaders wanted. And I think that that was uh, not beneficial for uh, Turkish prosperity in general. And uh, in that in that two decade process, he basically calcified his power. He, uh, you know, he, he put a lot of kickbacks and, and, you know, sold off all of these, sold off, a, sold off major sectors to his friends, basically created a group of like loyalists that are incredibly wealthy. And worst of all, he took away my favorite meal, raw Turkish meatballs, Turkish meatballs, you used to be able to eat with actual meat. And then they were like, oh, we can't get into EU with this. Not that you're ever going to get into EU, Turkey. Let's be for real for a second. Absolutely zero 
absolutely zero EU nations are going to allow 90 million Muslims to join the EU, no matter how much you say you're an atheist. They don't see it that way. But yeah, he took away the meatballs. It's fucked up. Many people are honking their car horns, they're dancing, waving flags, and they are celebrating their mayor, Ekrem Imamulu. Imamulu and the secular Imamulu. opposition CHP uh -huh. managed to retain control over this hugely important city of Imam Olu, which means the son of an Imam. That's that's his name. Ekrem Imam Olu. 16 million people with a surprisingly large margin. Preliminary results also suggest that President Erdogan's ruling AKP lost many other cities and provinces across the country to the opposition. One explanation is that many people here in Turkey are frustrated with the economic crisis and the government's failure to bring soaring inflation under control. Inflation currently stands at more than 65 percent and many people seem to have expressed their frustration at the ballot box. Tonight looks like a historic triumph for the Turkish opposition and uh, like a major blow to President Erdogan's image of invincibility. But Erdogan knew that this was going to happen. I suspect that this is something that he saw ahead of time, which is why he said this will be my last election. Süleyman Demirel, boş tencerenin yıkamayacağı iktidar yoktur. Which means there is no leadership an empty pan cannot destroy. As in, if people don't have food, if people don't have food to put on their pans, they will topple any leadership. How has Erdogan explained the inflation problem to his supporters? I think um, the way he explains it is, is America. That's why a lot of people think that it's like, I mean, there is also some validity to that, for the record. There is some truth to that. But yeah, that's how, um, that's how he explains it. Yeah, outside forces. Which, it's not wrong. Technically, it's not wrong either. There is definitely some truth to that. There is no power that an empty pot cannot destroy. Oh my god, just click translate pose. What? I mean, I, I do. America bad is a common Turkish tactic, because it's, but it's correct. There's also a tremendous amount of, like I said, there's an unimaginable amount of corruption, though. It's something to consider. Then there's also the classic stuff, LGBTGLAR, LGBT, you know, you got the social conservatism that they push for, um, all that good stuff. I mean, he is very similar to, uh, to Trump and Vladimir Putin in many respects. Recep Tayyip Erdogan is very similar to Vladimir Putin, uh, and, and Trump is very similar to Erdogan and uh, Vladimir Putin as well. Like, Trump is an early variant of uh, those guys. So, Abi election map, if you want to cover, if you want to take a look. Yeah, let's do it. God damn, dude. Kırklareli, Derya Bulut. This is a crazy fucking sweep. Um, in, in, like, all of the important parts of the country, at least. <laughs> Mansur Yavaş. Listen, when I grew up in Ankara, we had... What was his name? Neydi lan? Adamın adı neydi? Ünlü. Melik Gökçek, one of the worst mayors of all time. Dinozor Başkan, Melik Gökçek, just the fucking worst, okay? Just the absolute worst. Mitch McConnell of Turkey in a way, yeah, I mean, he was incredibly... Dude, I think Turkish corruption is a little bit different than American corruption. American corruption is streamlined, American corruption is normalized, it's like legal. Turkish corruption takes it so much further than that. I think a lot of Americans forget, like, when I talk about Turkey, it's just uh, very different. Like, absolutely. So much, so much worse. Like, you think our situation is bad because, like, Nancy Pelosi and Paul Pelosi are, you know, trading stocks with, like, insider information. But that is, like, I mean, that's nothing in comparison to what these guys do. They just take, like, millions of fucking dollars. Yeah, here's 2014 in comparison. Um, the 2014... Uh, Local elections, Mahalli İdareler Seçimi, Belediye Başkanlığı Seçimi, and it's just completely. This was all AKP in um in 2014. The orange here is AKP, Erdogan's party, uh, that he also calls AK Party, AK Party, and then it, this is the 2019 uh, numbers. In 2019, there was like uh you know there was a big revitalization. CHP for the first time ever actually started. Uh, gaining momentum. Everybody thought that this would reflect well on the uh, general election uh, that happened, what was it, last year? However, unfortunately, it didn't pan out, and Erdogan still won. AKP means Justice and Development Party, lol. AKP'nin neydi lan? Ben unuttum adını, amına koyayım, AKP'nin. AK Parti, AK Parti diye diye. Adalet ve Kalkınma, değil mi? Adalet, 
justice and uh yeah it's uh justice and and kalkama is like what development yeah justice and development party them is the kurdish party i suspect that's why i mean they got like it's so funny erzincan mhp tunceli dem party Adam sen çocukken bile başkanmış anca 2019'da gitti. Yani sen çoktan ABD'ye taşımış TYT Twitch falan kariyer yaptığında anca gitti. Evet benim yüzünden gitti. So yeah. How will this reflect LeBron's legacy? Uh, LeBron is going to retire in Turkey as uh, like Allen Iverson did. That's how it's going to affect it. All right. Um, once Erdoğan is gone, I've made a promise to the Turkish uh, chatters. I will. Go back to Turkey and do IRL streams and shit. Hopefully I don't get fucking murked. I mean, this is another classic. Desolate Turkish amusement park. How did this testament the government waste? Dinosaur. Uh, Dinosaur Park. We're not going to get into that, though. This is like major memes that I've covered before. Not going to relitigate that. As an American Turk living in Turkey, basically the opposite approaches you. We love it, baby. What do you think? Do you think American CIA would be okay with Ekrem replacing Erdogan in an early election if it happened? Yes, I do think that. I think that it is probably better for American interest that Erdogan is in power, even though he's like disruptive aesthetically, he ultimately is their guy. America allows, if America allows you to reign, uh, if America allows you to be uh, the leader for 20 years of a country that has like nuclear American bases, that means they can control you. That means that they have uh, confidence that, that you are a controllable well, entity. However, this does not mean that like the CHP leadership will be different. As a matter of fact, they will be better. They will definitely be, they will, but they will still be America's uh, lapdogs for sure. It's just a different, there will be a different mechanism of control for CHP. It'll be more uh, like a, it'll be more like a, like a normal relationship and not one that is like directly tied to all of their corruption. Erdogan is manageable because he's very corrupt. It's not an accident. Like I said, it's not an accident that they almost always launch investigations new investigations <clears throat> anytime he does something that they don't want them uh, they don't want him to do